there seems to be a little bit of confusion going on out there with a few athletes this week. I want to cover three of them, all right? Number one, let's start with Conor McGregor. A lot of people are telling Conor, stay active, stay busy. If you want to fight Khabib or if you want to fight Gaethje, here's what you need to do. The reason I say that is misunderstood is you're saying the same thing Conor's saying. The whole reason Conor's frustrated right now is he doesn't want to wait. He's not looking to be handed an opportunity. He's not. Conor's not in the same spot as other guy where a main event w w would make their life and their career or a world title fight. He only fights in main events. He's won three world championships. I mean, I just offer for you, that's not what this is. Anybody that's telling Conor, hey, stay busy, you need to be active and you need to deserve it. Oh, okay, great. The problem is, you don't have an argument. So this isn't even about, are you telling him the right thing? Or are you telling him the wrong thing? There's nobody opposing you. Connor is on your side of that. Connor also wants to stay busy. Now, you got another one, which is an Amanda. And I feel like there's a, very much being misunderstood here that Amanda wants to leave because she's unhappy about something. That was never said. Amanda is a very direct talker. One thing about Amanda in interviews is she doesn't do a whole lot of them. If she's having a good day or a bad day, she's questioning something or she's defiant about something, she'll just tell you. She speaks very clearly, very much from what's going on. Amanda said, I had a bunch of goals. I achieved them. I had some landmarks. I had things that I wanted to do. I did them. And now I'm in search of meaning of what this is all about. Never once has she ever uttered at all that she felt underpromoted, undervalued, like her participation wasn't fair. None of those things. That is absolutely false for anybody to go out there and report that about Amanda. She did an open dialogue with what she's internalizing. And every athlete goes through this. Why am I here? What am I doing this for? Am I progressing? Am I getting closer to my goals? Somebody who I met, who I respect tremendously. Baddest dude I've ever met. Toughest man I've ever come across on my time on this earth, a guy named Les Gutches. Les Gutches became a world champion in 1997. And it was great. He was thrilled. He was happy as he could be for one month. And he said, I had no idea what to do with myself. I spent my entire life trying to get to this goal. I've now achieved it. It seemed unobtainable. Once I got it, I didn't know what to do. I try to go do it again? I guess. I mean, the calendar's got a date laid out, and I'm the number one guy, and they got me ranked number one. I've still held, I, I mean, I guess that's what I go do, but I never had a goal to be a two time champion. I never thought I never had a goal to be a three time champion. I had a goal to be the world champion. I am now the world champ. What do I do? And he spent some time thinking about it. And then he changed his goals. Yes, I want to be a two-time world champion. And then the Olympics is a number of years away. And we just got our sights set on that. I want to do that too. But, but it took him a minute. So for Amanda to come out and just share that with everybody and go, well, I don't know what to do goal-wise. And, you know, at some point I, I also wanted to retire. So I guess retirement's next. I mean, I guess as I'm checking boxes, I just skipped to that one. That was just a fair comment. Now, Give her the same respect that Les Gutches was get. Let her internalize this. Everybody's tried to set rules and put parameters on Amanda from day one. She didn't listen to anybody but herself. Amanda's written the blueprint. She'll write this one too. She'll work this one out. She will come back and share with all the rest of us what her goals are moving forward. And then she will get up every day and work hard to go out and obtain them. Misunderstood. Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou has been put in the batter's box to fill in should anything happen between Stipe and Cormier. And some people question, why would you do that? You're the number one contender. Why would you be a standby fighter? What a bunch of scumbags. What kind of attitude is that? Why would you be a standby fighter to fight for the world championship? Let me think about that for a second, because I'd like to be world champion. How about that? You idiot. How dare, how dare you? Qu he earned that position. And now instead of sitting on his hands, he now has a date in front of him known as a finish line. 
He's got to get his weight under control, get his strength under control, get his timing under control. He's got to go work really hard. He's got to get on the scale. He will then be given a check to do that. And in a worst case scenario, he'll have a front row seat to scout his next opponent. Don't let anybody start a negative talk that being put in a position and given a date and a financial reward for a job you might not even have to go do as anything other than a compliment. He has been complimented. They, Usman was in this spot. Just to offer you a name that you would know. Usman was in this spot when Till took on Woodley. And Usman did everything that he was asked to do. How'd that work out for Usman? He solidifies the fact he's the number one contender. The number one contender is just something you say. Who's the number one contender? Oh, that guy's the number one contender. Okay, great. Until you say it about somebody else. When you go to the weigh-in, when you have a contract, when you get on the scale, you are solidifying you're the number one contender. Do not let anybody try to spin that into a negative. 